So, we are in Sweden. We are an organization believing in preciseness. And it's nine o'clock sharp, which means that we will start this third SCI Science Forum. So I would like to welcome you very much here this morning. And my name is Johan Schillanschana. I'm the executive director of SCI, the global organization. I'm so enormously pleased to be able to welcome almost 80 colleagues from around the world of this organization. We have colleagues here, and when I state the centric, if you can just raise your hands, so you can see Stockholm, I assume, a few. Yes, good, of course. And we have our neighboring country, Estonia, from Tallinn. They're all collected there. <laughs> uh, then we have a center in York. We have a few people there, our second biggest center. Welcome, great, Oxford. Yes, there you go. We have Boston, we have the US first of all. We can start with the entire US spread out. Good, because the center there is spread out. Boston, primarily, Davis, and Seattle. Wow. <laughs> and then we have a center in Bangkok as well. That's fantastic. And we have our center in Nairobi. Excellent. And to tell you, that's the entire century in Nairobi. <laughs> so it's not bad at all. So it's really great to have you all here. And actually, I'm a bit sad, in a way. We were supposed to have this third forum in Bangkok this year. Um, because we would like every second year to be somewhere out in the SCI world and connect really with people, organizations, in the regions where we operate. Uh, we decided in December that the political situation in Bangkok was somewhat uncertain and maybe not the right place for a forum such as this one. On the other hand, I think being a bit sad, this is also the strength of SCI. It means that we have centers, we have colleagues, we have people really working around the world where things are not as easy as they are here in Stockholm. We tend sometimes to complain quite a lot in this country about many things, uh, but when you compare it to most parts of the world, we are extremely well off, of course. And I think from that perspective, having that r direct relationship uh, with, other, uh, with other offices and other centers is actually a strength for us. And if you just look back in the last year, a couple of things had, did happen. We had Bangkok and everything that happened around there. We had Nairobi um, and the terrible terror, act of terror there. Even in Boston, we had a lot of uproar when we had um, problems with shootings and, and so on. So things are happening around the world. We have the Science Forum, as I said, once a year now. This is the third time when we gather SCI colleagues to discuss internally what we are doing, how we can work better, how we can be more relevant, how we can address the issues that really confront us in this world. Um, the first day, we always open up and invite partners, friends who are interested in our research, first of all, of course, and we are so glad to see so many of you here. I hope you also join us tonight for the housewarming in our new office here, just next door. Um, but because we also need the influence of your perspective. What is it that we are doing that is relevant? What is things we are not addressing that we should address? And that is also key for us, and we want to have this dialogue with you. But just to still stress, we see this as our internal forum. And it did sprung out from the fact that we realized, and I'm bragging now, of course I can brag, I'm head of this organization. It sprung out from the fact that SCI is so diverse in its competence and its experience from different parts of the world that we can organize our own conference. And things get so much easier, you may think. But we also realize that even within our own organization, we have a lot of different perspectives and ideas and so on. We have people promoting uh, GMOs. We have people who are not liking GMOs very much. We have people, promo people promoting uh, biofuels. We have people who argue that biofuels are maybe not so good from, from food, food security perspectives and so on. That's, that's the way it should be. That gives us a dynamic backdrop. I have only five minutes. I'm not going to give this grand expose of sustainability that you may expect from someone heading this organization. But the grand expose is what's happening in the next couple of days, actually. Not one person can give a grand expose. It's a big mistake if you try. So the only thing I would like to do is also to thank a few people. Uh, we have some of the board members here already. Where are you, board? Can you raise your hand? I saw at least one. Andreas, where are you? Did he? 
disappear? I saw Andreas. We have a fantastic board. And they are dropping in. I saw a few of them here. I don't know. They, they are nervous when I'm speaking, maybe. I don't know. We have a few new, new board members coming in this year also. The vice chancellor of the Stockholm University, uh, linking up to academics very, very strongly here in Sweden. And also uh, the head of the director general of Formas. And we have another person we cannot still say who because it's not 100% cleared yet by the government. Uh, I also like to thank all the partners out there, those that we are working with and those funding us. And we have more than 100 different organizations and funding SEI every year. But two, or one, if you, you know, say that the Swedish government, but I would say, you know, not just the government, I mean the whole Swedish system, the taxpayers of this country, are the major contributors to SEI. Give us the base, about 40% of our funding today from the Swedish government, Annika, you are the representative here today of the Swedish government. Feel the pressure. Uh, and Charlotte Petegonitska, the director general of SIDA. SIDA's support has also been extraordinarily important for us. Not just because of the money, but also because of the trust you give us in uh, planning and using these resources uh, in a way that we believe is the best for what we are doing. No micromanagement there, I must say, from neither the government or SIDA. So that's really highly appreciated. Um, we are moving forward a lot. One thing we did last year was to have a link with uh, one of the side things, with art. And we are discussing more and more the, you know, the need to link science and art to really touch people, not just the brains of people, but also the heart of people, to promote change. And to end up, I would like to read a passage, because I have to read it. You know, my, my memory is not good enough this early in the morning. But it's a passage from art, not science but it could really be applied to the science we are doing, I think. Um, one, one challenge really is today that we are quite often pushed to try to take a stance, either or, black or white. You are, you are climate skeptics or you're 100% climate change promoter. Or you, I mean, always taking stance, polarization. Science is not about that. And I think this passage from, from, a lit from, from, from literature can actually give us some guidance. So change artist to scientist if you want to. As an artist, the nuance is your task. Your task is not to simplify. Even should you choose to write in the simplest way, a la Hemingway, the task remains to impart the nuance, to elucidate the complication, to imply the contradiction, not to erase the contradiction, not to, to deny the contradiction, but to see where within the contradiction lies the tormented human being. To allow for chaos, to let it in, you must let it in. Otherwise, you produce propaganda. If not for a political party, a political movement, then stupid propaganda for life itself. For life as it is might itself prefer to be publicized. So it was Philip Roth in his book, I Married a Communist. So it's something to think about when we produce our science. So welcome everyone. I'd like to introduce Eric Kemp Benedict, the center director for SCI Asia, who will actually formally welcome you to Bangkok, but in a slightly different position. So please. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so thank you very much, Yuan, for that very nice uh, introduction uh, for everyone. To this, uh, to this forum, and what, what I would like to talk about, um, this is, oh, cheers. Uh, what I would like to talk about is, I, I am going to welcome you, uh, not just to Bangkok, but to Asia, and not just the Asia Center. I want to talk about SEI in Asia, because in fact, if you look at ongoing projects, I mean, projects we have going on right now, there are five centers active in Asia. Uh, the Asia Center, yes, but also Stockholm, York, Oxford, uh, and Oxford, and uh, the US centers. And at the Asia Center, we're actively talking with the Africa Center about doing some combined work, and we continue to talk about the possibility of using uh, the Tallinn Center's expertise in environmental economics, which could be quite relevant for work going on in Asia. And you can see we've got work in China, 
South Asia and Southeast Asia. And we cover all themes. This is true across SEI as well as within the Asia Center. Um, this is a small selection of past and present projects, publications, and so on, showing the wide range of policy relevant activities, uh, stakeholder workshops, peer reviewed publications, um, a number of different activities. So then we have SEI's Asia Center uh, in Bangkok, officially established in 2004, but it was in office before then. Our host is Chulalongkorn University. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, including, including myself, we have 13 uh, researchers, one postdoc, and a fluctuating number of interns. Um, uh, we've got a dedicated communications coordinator, five admin and support uh, people, and three research staff on long-term study leave. We're based in Thailand, so uh, the most numerous of the nationalities we have is Thai, but we've got eight nationalities in the office, mostly from Asia, China, Philippines, India, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Also, people from Germany and the US. And I must say that, um, as, as Johan pointed out, this is an opportunity for SEI researchers to share their work with each other. So I apologize for the rest of you of the possible inward looking focus of some of this presentation. But uh, so you'll see a little bit of just the Asia Center sharing with the rest of our colleagues what we're doing. Um, in particular, our vision statement, we came up with this uh, at a retreat. We don't normally share it externally. It's more our statement of what we want to do, but I wanted to emphasize something. So we say SEI Asia will be one of Southeast Asia's most compelling and influential catalysts of change. We like to work collaboratively and be useful, and I think that our mission statement captures that. Um, we've got two established research groups, uh, Political Ecology of Disaster Risk Resilience in Southeast Asia, or PEDRA, and Managing Resources for Sustainable Development, or mr for sd that align well with SEI's themes. Um, and nearly all of our projects fall under those, and our largest projects uh, fall in the middle. They include staff from both sides. But we've got some emerging research themes as well. We've got uh, gender and climate being led by Babette Resurrection, uh, sustainable agricultural systems being led by Charles Rogers, and sustainability macroeconomics being led by myself. The faces that you see up here are people who are actually in Stockholm right now, in the room. And if you're interested in any of these topics, please feel free to talk to us. Um, other than that, I just wanted to say something about our most important program, SummerNet. This has been going on since 2005 uh, with generous uh, support from CETA. Uh, one year after the center was officially formed, um, it has had its ups and downs, but recently they've just been ups, really. Um, and, and the program is very strong, and it just received a third phase of funding. Um, the goal has always been to achieve sustainable development through strengthening knowledge-based policy processes. Uh, the objectives to build capacity for policy-relevant research, focusing on cross-border collaborations within the Mekong region, something new this time, supporting regional assessments. Um, and we're really looking forward to working on this. You can see the phase three themes. So that's what I wanted to share. And now I would like to turn over to Frank Tamala, who is the chair for the Science Forum. Thank you very much. <laughs>